And what I have in my hand right now is just a glass bottle that has been painted with a resist made of clay and calcium. Currently, there is nothing on here that will ultimately be part of your cup. Here, I have Rami fiber cloth, and I will be cutting this into strips and soaking it in urushi and uh, a mixture known as sabi urushi. And I will be wrapping that around this form to create the initial basis of what will become your urushi cup. And I'm going to do that next. So this is the mixture of sabi urushi that I mentioned earlier. Now this is a mixture of the raw urushi lacquer with the addition of a couple different types of clay powder, and wood powder, and water. And that is what will form the core of your lacquer cup. The first layer of cloth has been applied. The sabi has been applied over it, and this is going to go cure. The next several steps will be simply a repetition of this one um, until enough thickness is built up, and then we will start the beautification process. I have enough layers on here. I think it will be stable enough to remove the form, and in this case, I'm just going to break out the glass. Here I've gotten most of the glass off. There's still a little bit there on the inside. So I'm going to soak this again and then bake it. And that uh, will actually help the rest of the glass particles fall off on their own. Um, afterward, I will sand the inside a little bit to make sure that there's no more glass at all. And I will then be squaring up one end and adding a bottom to this. Um, afterward, I'll be cutting down the, the height of this to make it the right size. And at that point, I will then continue to add more layers of the sabi urushi and cloth. This is, I think, four or five. Five layers of cloth currently with the sabi urushi. Now I'm going to sand this, get it down in dimension a little bit, and uh, begin the beautification process. So I'm going to actually use an electric sander um, that is considered possibly sacrilege in some some areas, um, but to me it's more efficient, gets the job done a little bit more quickly, and it doesn't have any ill effects. So we're done sanding for now. Um, I accidentally lied earlier when I said I was beginning the beautification process next. Uh, that kind of implies applying the color and all that, but, but technically I'm going to still apply um, probably two to three more layers of the pure sabi urushi to this, um, which will help to finish smoothing it out, remove all of the traces of the cloth. There's still the perceptible impression of the grain of the cloth left. That's going to get smoothed out. Um, the sabi is going to give me a good solid ground layer to work from. Uh, so let's get to that next. We're back to my lacquering area. I have some sabi that I mixed up uh, last night, uh, which is still going to be okay to use. So I'll be applying that here and letting it cure again. So here we have the starting point of all of the colored layers of urushi that will follow. I've given it two layers of the raw sashimi urushi mixed with lamp black and a bit of the finest grain clay. I do this to give me a good smooth starting surface to work from, but also because if in a lot of use the colored layers are ever worn completely away, it'll give a nice black undercoat before you reach the sabi urushi beneath. And I like to do that aesthetically, so uh, it's like the creation of a multi-layered onion. And we'll get to applying the colors next. So this is where the fun begins. 
Right here, I have some pre-mixed red urushi that I mixed up the other night. And to that mixture of the pure red urushi, which is, which is right here, I've taken a bit of that and added it to a separate vessel. And I've mixed in a little bit of the fine grain tonoko clay to give it a little bit more body. And I've also added a few drops of old brown glue. Um, which this is actually made from animal protein. So the reason I'm using this is for the protein content because protein when added to Arushi causes a chemical reaction which allows it to thicken. And the reason for that is because I want to get a thickened, uh, not sticky, but bodied mixture. Do you see that? How it's still hanging on to the end of the chopstick here? I want it to retain its shape and not not uh, not lose its shape. Sorry, that was an over complication of a simple statement. I'm gonna add a little bit more here of the premixed red, just a drop. You, you can see instantly it's already much thinner. And to that, we're going to go ahead and add another drop here of the animal hide glue. A little goes a long way. And we can watch it thicken up. I'm going to add one more drop, and I believe that'll be the proper consistency for us. Hopefully I mixed enough. I may need to mix more. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let that sit there for a second. I'm going to put another coat of the black on the inside here. This would kind of be attractive all on its own, I think. But I'm going to take bits of that and spread it out. I'm going to take a stiff brush, not too much give in it, I'm going to spread that out. Now, as you may have guessed, the reason we are doing this is to create this texture, which I'm making now with the brush. I can go over and redo the same section as many times as I want to until I'm happy with the result. There we go. Can you see the texture there? You probably can't, um, but that's the first layer. So here we have the red layer that I applied last. We can see that the texture remained. And next we'll follow another coat of red. 
Textured red coat is applied and cured. And next we'll follow a few different layers of various shades of green. Here I'm applying the third layer of green. You can still see the texture that I created underneath if you look really carefully. Um, and I'm doing different layers, uh, different colors of green, different shades of green as I layer that. So what we see here is the fourth cured layer of the green Urushi. I've applied it in various shades of green. Below that there are also two layers of red, two layers of black, three layers of sabi, and four or five layers of cloth and sabi. So this is a multi-layered object at this point. Uh, that's not even counting the interior layers of black. And I'm going to apply a few more, but we're getting very close to um, bringing out the layers here. You could just take it off and judge. That's actually closer to where I wanted it to be. Oh, see, 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 see. Oh. It's Compare it to how it was before. 